This video guides healthcare or mortuary workers in the safe handling of human remains that may contain Ebola virus. This video supplements procedural guidelines which can be found on the CDC website. Make sure that all workers have read the guidelines and are familiar with the procedures before they handle any infected human remains. Ebola can be transmitted in post-mortem care settings by laceration and puncture with contaminated instruments used during post-mortem care, through direct handling of human remains without recommended personal protective equipment, PPE, and through splashes of blood or other body fluids such as urine, saliva, feces, or vomit to unprotected mucosa such as the eyes, nose, or mouth. Only personnel trained in handling infected human remains and wearing recommended PPE should touch or remove remains that contain Ebola virus. Do not wash or clean the body. Do not embalm the body. Do not perform an autopsy. If an autopsy is necessary, consult the State Health Department and CDC regarding necessary precautions. Do not remove any inserted medical equipment from the body such as intravenous IV lines, endotracheal or other tubing, or implanted electronic medical devices. Cremate the body. If cremation is not possible because of safety concerns, the body should be buried in a standard metal casket or other comparable burial method. Contaminated Area Procedures The contaminated area is an area that includes the patient treatment room. Only workers wearing PPE that conform to CDC's guidance on personal protective equipment for healthcare workers are allowed to be in this area. CDC's guidance on personal protective equipment, PPE, for healthcare workers can be found on the CDC website. You will need the following equipment. A hospital gurney or mortuary stretcher, three pre-open cremation compatible body bags that meet the specifications described here. The third bag serves as the bottom layer of the gurney and is made of laminated vinyl or other chlorine-free material with a minimum of 18 mil thickness. The handles should be riveted handles reinforced with handle straps that run under the bag. Handles should not be sewn on. To keep fluids from leaking, all seams should be factory heat sealed or welded, not sewn, and the zipper should be on top. The second bag or middle layer should be designed specifically for the containment and transport of infectious bodies. The material should be pre-cut from the bulk roll to provide sufficient material to envelop the body and the next bag. This bag is placed on top of the third bag. It should be made of chlorine-free material impervious to fluids that can be heat sealed around the body to form a leak-proof body bag. The first bag or top layer is the bag closest to the body. It should be made of vinyl or other chlorine-free material and should be a minimum of 6 mil thickness. To prevent leakage of fluids, all seams should be factory heat sealed or welded, not sewn. The zipper should be on top. A thermal sealer for sealing the second bag, scissors for cutting excess material, a digital camera or mobile phone capable of being decontaminated after use and securely transmitting photographs electronically via Wi-Fi or text message, a U.S. Environmental Protection Agency EPA, registered hospital disinfectant and wipes. The label should state that the contents are appropriate for use against non-enveloped viruses, alcohol-based hand rub, a biohazard bag, a zip tie. PPE is recommended by the CDC's guidance on PPE for healthcare workers. And a large copy of the mortuary guidance job aid. A few more key points to consider during postmortem preparation of human remains containing Ebola virus are Follow the cleaning and disinfection recommendations found in the CDC guidance for environmental infection control in hospitals for Ebola virus. This guidance recommends immediate decontamination of PPE surfaces, equipment, or patient care area surfaces that become visibly soiled using the recommended wipes. Place all waste produced during postmortem preparation and decontamination into red biohazard bags in the contaminated area, following the CDC guidelines for Ebola-associated waste management. 
Now we'll demonstrate the step-by-step -step guidelines to protect workers when conducting post-mortem preparation of human remains infected with Ebola in a hospital setting. The number of workers needed for this process should be determined by the size and weight of the body being prepared and the ability of the workers to lift the body and assist with managing the body bag. Safe patient handling practices should be used as much as possible, such as using a patient or cadaver lifting device. We recommend posting an enlarged copy of the step-by-step -step guidelines in the contaminated area. The workers should read the guidelines aloud as they perform each step of the procedure. Turn on the thermal sealer to the manufacturer's recommended temperature setting. This allows it to warm up during the initial preparation of the body. The thermal sealer will be used to seal the second body bag. Use the camera or mobile phone to take a photograph of the decedent's face. This will be used for identification purposes later. The photograph should be securely transmitted via Wi-Fi, email, or text message to the pre-identified site manager. The camera or mobile phone must be decontaminated before being removed from the contaminated area or reused. If not decontaminated, the camera or mobile phone should be discarded along with the other medical waste. Do not wash or clean the body and do not remove any inserted medical equipment, such as IV lines or endotracheal or other tubing, from the body. Position the gurney with the three pre-open body bags next to the hospital bed with the body. Pull the bed sheets that are under the body up around the front of the body. Remove the first bag from the gurney. Gently roll the body wrapped in sheets as you slide the first bag under the body. Complete the transfer of the sheet wrapped body to the first bag and zip up the bag. Reduce the amount of air trapped in the bag by pushing gently as the bag is being zipped up. Disinfect gloved hands using the alcohol-based hand rub. If any areas of PPE have visible contamination, clean the area with a disinfectant wipe. Disinfect the outside of the first bag using the recommended wipes according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Ensure the second bag on the gurney is folded open. Transfer the first bag with the body in it to the gurney by using safe patient lifting practices. Place the first bag on top of the second bag material. The body should fit inside the second bag. Disinfect gloved hands again using alcohol-based hand rub. Fold the second bag material around the first bag. Heat seal the second bag approximately two inches from the edges while removing as much air from the bag as possible. Be careful not to damage your PPE with the hot sealer. Heat seal the bag a second time approximately one inch below the initial seal. And then heat seal diagonally across the corners. Use scissors to trim off any excess material along the seam. Turn off or unplug the thermal sealer to allow it to cool. The thermal sealer must be decontaminated before it is removed from the contaminated area or reused. Disinfect the outside of the second bag with the recommended wipes according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Disinfect gloved hands again using alcohol-based hand rub. Work the third bag around the second bag and zip up the third bag. Zip tie the zipper shut. Disinfect glove hands again using alcohol-based hand rub. Wheel the gurney to the decontamination area. Decontaminate the surface of the body bag using the recommended wipes. Begin by applying the hospital disinfectant to the top of the bag and any exposed areas of the gurney's cot. Roll the bag to one side to decontaminate half of the bottom of the bag and the newly exposed portion of the gurney's cot. Repeat with the other side of the bag and gurney. 
While performing decontamination, remove any visible soil on surfaces of the bag or gurney with the disinfectant wipes. After the visible soil has been removed, reapply the hospital disinfectant and allow sufficient contact time as specified by the manufacturer of the disinfectant. Using the recommended wipes, disinfect the surfaces of the gurney from the handles to the wheels according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Disinfect glove hands using alcohol-based hand rub. Clean area procedures. The following equipment should be used in the clean area. Hospital gurney or mortuary stretcher, adhesive back pouch that is applied to the decontaminated body bag, single-use disposable gloves with extended cuffs and a long sleeve disposable gown, biohazard spill kit, which should include recommended PPE, absorbent materials such as paper towels, kitty litter, or a solidifier, an EPA-registered hospital disinfectant, and biohazard waste bags, infectious substance labels to be applied to the decontaminated body bag. These include the following, black and white infectious substance label, United Nations UN 2814 label, do not open label, name and phone number of the hospital administrator. Push the gurney gently so that only the gurney and the decontaminated body bag enter the clean area. The workers in the contaminated area should not enter the clean area. Another set of workers should receive the body in the clean area and transport the body for disposition using safe patient handling practices. The transportation of human remains guidelines listed in the CDC guidance document should be used. Remember, the number of workers needed for this process will be determined by the size and weight of the body being prepared and the ability of the workers to lift the body and assist with managing the body bag. Where feasible, a patient or cadaver lifting device should also be used. At this point, the body bag has been decontaminated. As long as the body is handled carefully, the potential for further contamination will have been eliminated. Workers who handle the body bag from this point until the body is cremated or placed into a metal casket should wear single-use disposable gloves with extended cuffs and long sleeve disposable gowns. Other PPE is optional. If there is no evidence that the body bag has been compromised by a tear or puncture or liquid coming from the bag, surfaces that contact the body bag should not be considered contaminated. Gloves and disposable gowns used for transport can be disposed of as regular trash. The contaminated area workers should proceed to the PPE removal area and follow the procedures in CDC's guidance on personal protective equipment for healthcare workers. You can find more information on the safe handling of human remains with Ebola virus, including transportation and disposition of remains at the CDC and NIOSH websites.